Hey guys, this video is about procedural leaf shaders and how we can create them in Blender. Here you can see the shader in action. It has some cool parameters to customize the leaf shape to your preference. The setup I will show you is relatively simple and it demonstrates the basic principles which you can use to build your own advanced leaf shader. Okay, so let's go. In this tutorial, we will work with a basic plane which already has UVs and the material applied. In the node editor, we delete the principal shader and add a texture coordinates node. Now we will have a look at the UV coordinates. With a separate X, Y and Z node, we can inspect the components of the UV coordinates. For this tutorial, we only need the X and Y coordinates because the plane we are using only has two dimensions. We can use a creator then node to compare the X and Y coordinates against each other and now we can see that a linear gradient appears. By using a float curve on one of the components, we can start shaping the leaf. Obviously, the resulting shape only represents one half of a leaf, so we have to mirror it along the y-axis. To create the mirror effect, we have to manipulate the y-coordinate, so it is a gradient which is zero in the middle and one on both sides. Here I do this with a color ramp node, but we can also do this mathematically, which is my preferred method. To do this, we replace the color ramp with a map range node and we remap the value in a range of minus 1 to 1. Next, we will use the math absolute node to turn the negative values into positives. This now gives us the same outcome as the color ramp node, but it should be a little bit more performant. The result we have can be used as the alpha map input for a principal shader. So for this I add the principal shader and I go into the material settings and set the material to alpha clip. The next thing we will do is to create a stem. For this we will use the mirrored Y coordinates we already have. Now we take a map range node again and the first thing we will do is we invert the output values. With that black turns to white and vice versa. By adjusting the input maximum value, we can control the thickness of the stem. Next, we will simply subtract the x coordinates from this gradient to create a scaling along the x axis. For organization purposes, I duplicate the separate x, y, and z node, but you don't have to do this because you can simply reuse the existing one. Next, we will use a subtract node, and by using it in a similar way like the greater than node, it will return a nice smooth gradient, which will serve as the base shading for our leaves. Now we can simply multiply this value with the mirrored y coordinates. Now we use a maximum node to combine the mask with the stem. If we now plug the result in the color input of the principal shader, we can see that the alpha mask doesn't work anymore. So instead of creating the alpha marks the previous way, we we use the greater than node and then we plug in our leaf shape and we set the threshold to zero. And now this will return a nice alpha mask. So far the node tree is relatively simple, but creating the veins is a little bit more complex. For this we will use the x coordinates and first we multiply it with a value and then we use the math fraction node which will return the decimal points of our value and by changing the value in our multiply node we can control the frequency. Similar to what we've did with the mirrored y coordinates we use a map range node to first remap the value in a range of minus one to one and then we add a absolute node to only return positives. Then we add another map range node, we invert the output and like with the stem value, with the maximum input value, we can control the thickness of our veins. Now we can use the gradient mask of our leaf and simply plug it in the input maximum value of our map range node to scale the veins towards the rim of our leaf. By multiplying the gradient mask with another value, we can again control the thickness of the veins. 
You can ignore the white area around the leaf shape as we will fix this later. To control the rotation of the veins, we simply have to rotate our coordinates with the vector rotate node. And if we rotate it with the default settings, you can see that the center of the rotation is at the zero position of the coordinates, and that's not what we want. Actually, we have to set the center at the mirrored axis of our leaf, which is exactly 0.5 in the y coordinate. And if we now rotate the coordinates, you can see that the rotation works as expected. But obviously, one side of the leaf needs to be rotated in another direction as the other side. To do this, we can again work with the y coordinates of our base UVs. Then we use the Crater Den node with a threshold of 0.5, and this will give us this mask. And this mask can be used for the factor input of a mix node. With this setup, we can control the rotation of each side independent from each other. To control the rotation simultaneously, for the top input of our mix node, we simply have to add a value to the base rotation, which in this case is zero. And for the bottom input, we have to subtract this value from the base rotation. And now we have a really nice control over the angle of our veins. And finally, we mix the veins with our stem by using a Dana maximum node. And then we can mix this with our main shading. And now we need to fix the white area outside of our leaf. And this can simply be done by clamping the gradient mask. Yeah, so now I'm really happy with the results so far. All that's left to do now is to adjust some settings and color the leaf. To control the colors, I simply use a color ramp in this example. And here I simply multiply our main shading mask with another value to lift its values a little bit. The final step for this tutorial is to create the normal map. And for this, I use the bump node. And here I plug in our mask for the height input. I decrease the distance a little bit and use this for the normal mask. So that's the basic setup for this tutorial. And like I've said, it can be improved a lot. So here, for example, we can change the interpolation for the stem and the veins from linear to a curve look to not have this sharp corner in our normal map. And also there's a problem that's only visible if we zoom in really close to the edge of our leaf. And here you can see this jagged edge. And this is caused by the precision of our float curve. So it would be better to do the curve in a math operation instead. But if you are not doing macro shots, I think this shader is more than enough. Yeah, so that's the shader on a little mesh I've made. So here we can control the parameters to change the amount and angle of veins. And also we can shape the leaf with our float curve. And finally, if you want to have a look at a more advanced setup, or maybe if you want to support me, you can have a look at my Gumboat page where I sell a product which includes a more advanced setup. And this file includes geometry node groups, also an advanced leaf shader, and a ton of preset files. And I also include a discount code for my YouTube viewers below this video. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you've liked it. Leave a comment down below and a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to my channel and see you next time.